Well, it appears Plozy and Schiff have something up their sleeve to try to do another impeachment of our POTUS. And I've got lots of other things to share with you. Tons of headlines, so stick with me. I'll be with you in a minute. Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and sorry about not getting a video out on Friday, but I had a little bit of microphone issues, and I recorded it about three times, so let's go with it this time and see if I can get this one done and posted for Saturday morning. So here we go. This is something that I really thought you needed to see because this is our POTUS and his character. It really is. The Trump campaign has been going around ordering food from local restaurants to give to the hospital workers, but get this, they've been doing it anonymously. Yeah, they'd call up these restaurants, order a whole big bunch, and they would pay for it, and all they'd do is just give, you know, a person's name, so they didn't want it to be something that was political. I think this is fantastic, because when you read through this, this is not them trying to pat themselves on the back or to say, ooh, it's a campaign type ad that we want. No, this is just the campaign had been making the orders anonymously until sources confirmed the charitable operation with Fox News. One source said the effort was to kill two birds with one stone, support local restaurants while supplying medical workers with needed help. The campaign has already spent tens of thousands of dollars in the past few weeks, which they plan to continue to do in the coming days. They're doing it as a donor who cares, the source told the outlet, so nothing politically is tied to it. We're just trying to, you know, show a thank you. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that really is the heart of our president. He has a heart for the people. He wants to keep the businesses going. And he wants to show appreciation to the workers that are putting their lives on the line for us right now. I just thought this was such a wonderful thing. You know, that needs to be spread around, folks. Spread it as much as you can. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you are, please share this with people. They need to know this. And they also, remember, need to know that they were doing this anonymously. They were trying to not point to their campaign, and they were trying to just bless the people. I love it. I really do. And then I wanted to show you this because this is kind of an update on a previous video that I did about the whole FISA court thing. And then there was the Horowitz report that just came out, the inspector general for the DOJ. And he talked all about the Woods procedures that they weren't following and how there were 29 cases that they examined and four of them they couldn't even find the Woods file for. Three of them, they don't even know that a Woods file ever existed for those three. And all of the ones that they examined had errors, big time errors in the Woods procedures. Now, the Woods Procedures, it basically is a file where they have to put all the documentation for any accusations they're making. So if they're making accusations against someone, and that's why they want the FISA warrant for them, then they're going to have to back it up with real stuff. And they're not doing that. They weren't doing that. None of them were done correctly. Out of 29, none of them. So... I just thought this was kind of nice. This is from the actual FISA court, and this is their ruling on it that they said, you know, they're not there. And they had these 29 applications. Now, they're not making a judgment whether something is right or wrong or the material was correct or incorrect. They just were looking at, did they follow the procedure? That's what this part of the review was. And they weren't. They weren't following at all. Well, check this out, because I think this is really what it comes down to. Regarding the defects in the page applications, the court observed the frequency with which representations made by FBI personnel turned out to be unsupported or contradicted by information in their possession and with which they withheld information detrimental to their case calls into question the reliability of other 
FBI applications. Okay, this is big, folks, because in Horowitz's report that he put out in December over the Carter Page one, well, technically he was evaluating the Carter Page and the three subsequent renewals for it. That's what that report was about. But if you look at the very first page of that report, you will see that there were also FISA warrants on Manafort, Flynn, and Papadopoulos. So are those the three that maybe they couldn't even find if there was a Woods file started? If so, are they going to be possibly overturned because of this? So I think this is really significant here. And then down here is the court order, which basically they want to know the names of the targets and the docket numbers so they can look at those themselves and do a review. And if they decide that those weren't valid, it would invalidate all of what happened and everything that came from those would be invalidated, which means Flynn, Papadopoulos and Manafort any prosecution that came out of that, any of the guilty plea, whatever, would all be washed away because it's all invalid. If the warrant was invalid, everything that came from that is invalid. Fruit of the poison tree. So I thought I'd leave that for you. Remember, I put all the links down below. They're in the description of the video. Usually if you're on a mobile device, you have to click a like a little triangle or something or maybe some dots, whatever the case is, you click that and it will pop open that description. All of the links will be in there for you so you can take those. And so enjoy, share them. I want you to share them with other people. Now, for those of you who follow the 17th letter of the alphabet, I wanted to include this because... I think it's important for you to see this guy, Austin Seinbart, has been the subject of great discussion and everything. Well, this particular researcher says that he took the screenshot and it says partner operations analyst at CrowdStrike. Now, I will tell you that I went to the same LinkedIn account here. It's the same one, same number. I, t I checked it out to make sure. I didn't see that, but then I don't have a LinkedIn account. So maybe it's because I don't have an account. I could only see the bare minimum. I did not see this. So this is the only place I have seen it. I wanted to make sure you saw it. And I will give you the link to this particular account if you want to talk to him more about it. Maybe you could do that. But um, yeah, I don't know. If that is true and he's connected with CrowdStrike, then that settles the matter totally. Of course, I think the 17th letter, the alphabet settled it anyway. In my opinion, it's a settled matter. And this guy's been exposed as a LARP, but that's my opinion on it. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you because I think this is a plan that you need to be aware of. I think probably most of you anticipate this. Somewhere along the line, the Democrats are going to try to impeach POTUS again. They just are. This is their entire way of working. They have to because they know they can't win. And Sleepy Joe's looking a lot sleepier all the time. The guy can't even talk in front of a camera for more than like two or three minutes. And, you know, you get POTUS up there in all of these, these briefings that have been going on every day. And he talks for like an hour. I love it. I love watching it because he is so with it. Everything he's talking about, he knows it all. He doesn't have to stop and think. He has it all right there. And so it's such a contrast to Sleepy Joe. Really big contrast. But personally, I think possibly they're trying to get Cuomo in there. That eventually Joe will step down because of physical issues. And who knows, the way Joe is, maybe he's even going to contract this, um, you know, covid so we'll see. But anyway, I wanted to share this with you, though, because this is something to keep in mind in case down the line, this is what they try to use or one of the things they try to use to impeach him again. Here it is. Uh, Paul Sperry says developing Pelosi and Schiff are preparing to investigate Trump for allegedly mishandling COVID-19 outbreak, and they plan to focus on disproportionate infection rate among blacks to suggest some kind of racial negligence. They'll also call for rolling lockdowns through next fall. 
Okay, the rolling lockdowns, kind of significant because that would be a big squelch to our economy, and that's going to be a huge issue. But the real focus here is on the infection rate among blacks. Disproportionate, huh? Well, Soledad O'Brien put this up, says, Nurse friend tells me black women over-indexing on COVID-19 where she is. Everyone on a vent is a black woman. Okay, do you see any actual evidence there? No, you have total hearsay and it's from a person. We don't even know if this person really is a nurse. We don't know who this person is. We have no idea. It's an anonymous source. Once again, this person who is a blue check person, notice this blue check. I know it's not blue, but it is on Twitter. Ah, oh, says this. And what happens? Everybody on Twitter starts sharing it, and oh, it must be true. Soledad O'Brien said it. Yeah, so you get people like this lady up here who says, it's frightening since black people disproportionately have underlying conditions like high blood pressure, asthma, diabetes, sickle cell, and lupus. So now it's starting to go, and it's just a little rumor that started hearsay and now it's going to be something big they're working to build that up i think so that they can try to use it as a way to impeach president trump again uh, so be prepared you'll probably be hearing this in the future and I think this is something else that you're going to probably be hearing in the future because this article came out in The Nation. And I'll tell you, talk about Trump derangement syndrome. Woohoo! Whoever wrote this definitely has it. Ken's got some serious TDS going on here because he says the military knew years ago that a coronavirus was coming. The Pentagon warned the White House about a shortage of ventilators, face masks, and hospital beds in 2017, but the Trump administration did nothing. Dum dum dum. Yeah, well, if you look at the actual document, look at this. It was in 2017, but look at the date. January 6th. Huh. Now, remind me again. Um who was president on January 6th of 2017? It was not Donald Trump. He didn't come into office until a couple weeks later. So yeah, it was not. Not that I'm saying, I mean, surely afterwards he was given this and they went through it. But the very idea that, see, it was his plan and they didn't do, they didn't implement it. No, that's just oh, stupid. Anyway, this is a plan that the military has come up with for pandemic influenza and infectious disease response. And so they go through and, you know, talk about these different kinds of pathogens and they can be these different, uh, they can be to produce these different ways and each type poses unique response and recovery challenges. And then it talks about, you know, catastrophic biological incident could threaten the nation's human, animal, plant, environmental, and economic health, as well as America's national security. Such an event would demand a rapid and effective response in order to minimize loss of life and other adverse consequences associated with the incident and to thwart ongoing threats and follow on attacks in the case of suspected criminal activity or terrorism. The potential for a large biological incident to impact the United States is real. Okay, so they take it real and they go through the different things and the different steps about it. So when they're talking about this, it's like, well... They're talking about the different uh, types of threats they might have and how they could be transmitted and what it would take to go through that and the different uh, organizations that they'll be coordinating with. And as I went through and I read some of this big chunk of this, what I was getting the feeling for is this is not a plan for if there's this pandemic the military steps in and takes over everything. That's not what this plan is. This plan is the military is used for support of local governments. CDC will coordinate with key state governments 
to build a graphic interface designed to show outbreak cases, type of transmission, and risk assessment for future transmission with considered application of those factors to adjust overseas travel warnings. I think one of the keys there is the key state governments because this is really where the heart of this plan, if you read, you know, like I said, the part that I read, seemed to indicate that it was going to be a support plan for what the governors and the different states should already have in place and be implementing. And the problem that we have right now is that we have some key state governments that are not necessarily working with President Trump. They put on an air that they are so that they can get the stuff but then when they get it they grouse about it and they try to make it sound like they're not getting what they need like for instance in new york they are getting the respirators that they need it's just they want more respirators than they currently need right now and so the federal government is holding those until they see exactly where they need to be because there are more places than new york in our country and Louisiana's having some trouble Florida and California and Texas there are different places that may need those respirators so there's no sense giving them all to New York even though New York doesn't need them all at the time so then when they need them for maybe Texas or California then they have to go and take them from New York and take them somewhere else it's a time delay thing why do that when the federal government can hold on to them all and then disseminate them as needed? And that's really the key. When you hear New York saying they don't have enough respirators, it's not that. It's that they don't have as many as they asked for because they don't need that many yet. If they need more, they'll get them, but they're not going to get them until they need them. And so if they're not getting them in their hospitals, if you happen to be like somebody who's working in a hospital in New York and you don't have the respirators that your hospital needs, it's someone in your state government that's not allowing you to have those. They're clogged up somewhere there. It's not the federal government that you have to point fingers at. So just to make you aware of that, and there were some questions today. I'm recording this on Friday night. And so there are some questions that uh, had to do with that during the briefing today, and that was the response. So anyway, like I said, that's pretty much what I saw when I went through this, because it seemed like there was a big emphasis on local. And then I wanted to point this article out to you from the Daily Coin, and it says an executive order has initiated Department of Defense Global Campaign Plan for Pandemic Influenza and Infectious Diseases. So there is some kind of executive order that's happened. I tried to find it if it's a, one of President Trump's executive orders, but I couldn't find it. So I'm not sure, but that's the name of it. That's what it is. And it's not the first one. I mean, they've had this plan. This was, came out on February 13th. Well, back here, they had this. It was a similar plan, or at least the beginnings of it, back in August of 2006. So the military has been planning for something like this for a long time. But like I said, it's not a planned takeover by the military of our entire country. This is not martial law. And that's not what it's intended to be. This entire report is not supposed to be a manual for implementing martial law during a pandemic. That's not what this is. They are supposed to come in as support. So that's as I see it. And that seems to be the role, if you listen to the briefings, that seems to be the role that they're playing. And just to let you know, here's one from 2018. And that is from the Department of the Navy. And here we are talking about pandemic influenza and infectious disease policy. So yeah, this was being worked on. And it's been, I mean, this one even says 2004. So they have been working on it for a while. It is a work in progress. That's what you do. You have something you can't possibly plan for absolutely everything. And when you're involved in one of these pandemics, then you can change and you can see what needs to be changed for next time. So that, I think, is what's happening. And then I wanted to show you this from the U.S. Navy. There have been a lot of uh, tweets out there lately 
from the different military branches. So it's kind of interesting keeping an eye on them. And a lot of times they're posting pictures. And I don't think these pictures are just haphazard. I don't think they just like, oh, we need four pictures. Give me four pictures. I think there's reasons why we see the pictures we do. And I want to show you this one a little closer up. Take a look at this and check out what letter you happen to see right here. That looks to me like the 17th letter of the alphabet. Doesn't it look like that to you? Do you think it's by chance that they put this in there? Yeah, look closer. And if POTUS retweets one of them, one of their posts, and they have pictures in it, look very carefully at the pictures because there might be more going on and something that he's trying to point out to us. Okay, then I wanted to share this with you because I think we need to kind of be aware, and I've talked about this before, about how data is given to us and what data is out there. And this is from, from NBC News, and it was updated on April 3rd at 10.28 a.m. So they have these numbers for us. Now, this kind of chart is not so bad, but if you go through, you can find out how many were confirmed cases, like here we have in New York, 102,863 confirmed cases, and then the deaths are 2935. So you can find out what percentage. When I looked through this before, um, it was about 2%, it seemed like, of the confirmed cases, 2% of them died. But Again, we don't know for sure. And then you have, you know, down here, Louisiana, you've got several. And you can just go through and you can see the different ones. I tell you, I think the best place to live is South Dakota right now. Because, let's see if it'll even come up. In North Dakota, they only have three deaths. In South Dakota, they have two. Uh, West Virginia doesn't have very many. They have two. So, yeah, Michigan has quite a few that's pretty, I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it doesn't come up. But yeah, Michigan has quite a bit. And I think when I did the percentage on that, it was more like three, over 3%. So it was much higher. But anyway, you can go through and you can check those. And it even tells you down here the U.S. territories and how many, I, I'm pretty sure this is how many confirmed cases. It's not how many deaths. But then they give you a chart like this so you can see. So I like this kind of chart better then I like this kind of chart. Uh, this is from New York Times. Yeah, because they're so reliable. They did the bubbles, the circles, and it makes it look so much worse. So I'm not real fond of the, the circles, but you can go through. And one nice thing about this, though, is they do give you a per capita, which means, you know, you can kind of compare apples to apples instead of apples to oranges here but yeah there's some per capita there's some hot spots that's for sure and so oh look that uh, i don't know what's really right there in indiana that's making it a hot spot most of what i saw was up in marion county which is indianapolis but anyway you can go through you can look at these maps i'll include the links down below for you and then I wanted to show you this because you know how we had a bunch of kids that went down to uh, Fort Lauderdale and different beaches in Florida over spring break because it was spring break and nobody was going to keep them from celebrating spring break. And then when they all dispersed, they spread their little virus to everybody. So they took it across the entire country. Well, the same thing just happened in India. They were not having too much of a problem, but then all of a sudden they had this Marcaz event, which I believe was a religious celebration. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden after this event, which the authorities told them not to have, and it was between about 1,500 and 2,000 people attended it. And then they all dispersed and guess what? Yeah, Delhi all of a sudden has a big spike in cases and half of them are linked to that event. And here's another article you can watch this video because it has the authorities telling the leaders of this this particular event they don't have it you can't have it because of the the distancing the social distancing that needs to be done and you need to keep people from being in large groups 
and yet they still did and now you know, India has a big problem because of it so folks don't get in big groups okay don't do that and then I wanted to show you a couple of things about decoding now I'm not a decoder myself. I do personally decode for myself, but I'm not as good at that as some of these other YouTube channels that do the decodes. So I allow them to do that. I do the government documents and we all get along really great. But I wanted to show you this because I think most of us are aware that these upper level elites are communicating through Twitter in some kind of code. We're just not real sure what the code is. Well, this particular researcher says, hey, maybe they're using these Flessner grills, which is basically a like a cardstock a piece of cardboard and you have holes in it at certain locations. Well, if you all have the same one, then what you do is you overlay it onto a text and the code, whatever you're trying to you know, put out there, the message will come out through those holes because the holes are in a certain place. So this is what this researcher theorizes and it is a speculation, but I think he's kind of got an idea here. It's very intriguing because some of them do seem to make sense. And this one, you know, uh, Comey had this odd climbing is good exercise, but only trained people should try these moves. And he put this out. It's really stupid because look, the guy's not even got his feet hardly off the ground. Just, it's a dumb, dumb thing. But shortly thereafter, what happens? That guy, you know, the engineer on the train blasts the train there through the train station. So you got to wonder if there was some kind of connection. And so he thinks that possibly if they have these certain templates that maybe there, he thinks there's probably about three of them and that if they use these templates, they all have the same one and you have your, your phone or they all have the same kind of phone and the same font. And if you put it on there, then everybody can read the message. So it's a possibility. I thought it was interesting. And if you're into decoding like that, then, you know, try it. See if there isn't something to it. I, you know, thought it was just an interesting article that you might want to read, you might be aware of. And the similar thing is happening with Ellen. And I think many of you know Ellen DeGeneres has been uh, putting out some very weird tweets and also, you know, Tom Hanks. Well, Ellen mentioned Orpheus. Well, guess what? I, you know, my first thought was the Greek myth, of course, but look at this. There's an Orpheus Island and it's off the coast of Queensland, Australia. Hmm. And when you go to the site, you'll be struck by the fact that it's a secluded island for 28 rich people and it's the perfect island hideaway. Just need to put that out there because I thought that was a very interesting point. Also, they make some other points about the different tweets that have been going out. It's really kind of strange, but I'm pretty sure there's some kind of code they're using because uh, the tweets are just too bizarre otherwise. And then I wanted to show you this because this is, he says he's an MD and he found something that he thought was really strange because he said, I stumbled onto data which shows ICD diagnostic codes on all deaths. We are being told, and this is from the UK, we are being told 3,000 plus deaths in UK. The data says otherwise. Data updated weekly shows as of two weeks ago, 103 deaths in England, Wales with ICD codes linked to COVID. That is it. 1,500 deaths total or respiratory disease for that week. That includes all comers, so pneumonia, COPD, etc., etc. I think this might prove significant. And then he gives a link down here, and this is a screenshot of those deaths. And it says deaths where COVID-19 was mentioned, and it was only 103. So uh, very interesting. And that has been my question. Are we really being given accurate data for what's going on, especially with the deaths? And my other question on it is, just because someone dies and they tested positive for COVID-19, does that mean that their death was because of the COVID-19? 
if you recall in one of my previous videos I showed you a chart where Italy had 0.8% of all the deaths were people that had no other condition. Almost 50% of all the deaths had three other conditions going on. And so there were three health conditions that the person could have died from, but yet because they tested positive with COVID, then it was attributed to that. So that's my question. When we're getting this data, is this data accurate about the different deaths that are going on? How can we find that out? That's a big question I have for you. If you've got ideas, I'd love to hear it. If you're in the medical profession, I kind of wonder if there isn't a way that normal people can get access to these deaths. Is there a data set in the United States where we can check that? Can we cross-reference that with the data that we're getting from you know, the newspapers saying this many people have died? So I would like to know that if you've got that information, if you know anything about that. I don't have all the answers on digging, and it helps if some of you know something or how to get some kind of data that I don't. It would be really nice if you could help me out there. Then uh, I wanted to show you this because this goes right along with it. Another COVID-19 lie exposed. Los Angeles health officials caught lying about teenagers' death linked to coronavirus. So, yep, it's been exposed. And, you know, I just think that this is something we need to keep on top of. I also want to refer you to this Crowder video because he talks about the fish tank cleaner lady. Now, if you're not familiar with that, there was a lady who said that she wanted to use the medicine that Trump had said because she believed what Trump said. And so she and her husband drank this uh, fish tank cleaner because it had it in there. And then he died and she was in the hospital for a little bit. Well, you need to watch this because he brings up some evidence that puts a lot of what she said into question. She definitely was a Democrat. She had given money to Democrat causes and everything. And so this was really a setup and maybe even more than that. You have to watch it to see because I think he lays out a pretty good case that this woman needs to be investigated by the police because there might be something more. I'll leave the link to that down below and you can watch it. And then I wanted to show you this, that John Durham's investigation intensifies focus on who? John Brennan. Yeah, this was a really good article here that talks about how things are still moving, folks. He's interviewing a lot of people and it's starting to spiral in on Brennan. So I think that's really great that it's still happening. It still is. We're getting closer every day. And then to leave you with something very pleasant and uplifting at the end of this, I wanted to show you this because, yeah, folks, you can get past it. Even if you're elderly, you can get past this disease. This is a 104-year-old World War II veteran, and he is now virus-free. And he got to leave the hospital and they have the balloons up here, 104. And it was a happy birthday celebration for him. So I wanted to share that with you. It's a nice little video. It's pretty short. And you can watch that. But I'll leave the links down below, as always. And I just wanted to let you know something very uplifting that just because you get it doesn't mean you're going to die. So hang in there, everybody. I want to encourage you because... This is all going to work out for our ultimate best. I know it is. Hang in there. We can do this. We are a strong country. We come together. We pull together. And we can continue to make America great as we stand through this difficult time. So that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by. And I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.